mystical yet modern. Today we'll be creating instant pastel crystals using nothing but a handful of filters and just a single 3D object. All resources featured here today can be found on Envato Elements, where you get unlimited downloads of graphics, photos, and fonts, millions of creative digital assets, all with simple commercial licensing. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus, let's get right into it. So I already have a super simple pastel pink background with a touch of grain laid down. We'll be starting with constructing a golden frame illustration by combining four different assets from the Zodiac Graphic Elements Kit. The first being Element 1. Let's go ahead and drag and drop and center Element 1 onto the canvas. If it's not already a smart object, then right click Convert to a Smart Object. Then let's go to Layer Adjustments of Brightness Contrast, setting it to around negative 60 brightness and 45 contrast. Though so these numbers never need to be exact. Now, using the Rectangular Marquee Tool, uh, select everything above the foreground mountains in the illustration. Add a layer mask and then hit Ctrl I to invert that layer mask. We'll be doing some final masking here soon, so don't worry about masking in too much or too little. But first, we're going to drag and drop the Virgo asset directly over the first element, so they match up pretty exactly. Hold Alt and drag and drop the Brightness Contrast Smart Filter from Element 1 onto the Virgo asset. And then one more time, hold Alt and drag and drop the Layer Mask as well. Now we can Control i to invert that Layer Mask so that the two frames look like one, uh, like they're connecting. Now let's drag and drop Element 17 onto the canvas, enlarging it so that the stars fill up that horizontal space surrounding the golden frames on the side here. Then we can hold Ctrl and click the Layers icon to make a selection in the shape of the stars. And then select Modify Contract by 15. Now let's add a layer mask, which will then thin out the outline of the stars. We can duplicate Element 17 to add even more stars, making sure to flip and rotate them so they don't look overly repetitive. Let's group all of our current gold elements, uh, name that group Gold Foil, and then clip a new layer into the group, setting that layer to Overlay at a 50% opacity. And then using a large soft round brush set to white, let's paint in some highlights on each corner of the frame to really help sell that Gold Foil effect. Now we're going to clean up our design by masking out any details we don't need. This includes the woman's legs, the inner stars, and parts of the mountain. Now let's create a new group above the gold foil group and drag and drop the element 16 asset, which are gold foil mountains. We're going to use these mountains to create a new mountain range on the uh, gold foil design repeating the same steps as the previous gold element, including adding highlights and adjusting the brightness contrast, so everything matches. We can also do one more round of masking to make sure the mountains and gold foil design match up, as well as creating and clipping a hue saturation adjustment layer into the gold mountain group, bringing down the saturation so that it better matches the rest of the design, as these mountains seemingly uh, lean more red. We're going to finish up this gold design by dragging and dropping two images onto the canvas. First a photo of a pastel sky, enlarging it significantly, and adding a blur gallery blur of 67. Or enough to hide any pixelation caused by the enlarging. And then next up, pastel 23 from the Pastel Blend Gradient Backgrounds Pack making sure it fills the entire canvas and setting its layer mode to lighten at a 48% opacity. And finally, create a brightness contrast adjustment layer set to negative 66 brightness and 100 contrast. Then we can group these three layers together and mask them so that they're a combined to the shape of the gold design. 
I use both the pen tool and brush tool, but you can use whatever method you prefer. Next up, let's place and extract our subject. I use Select Subject, added a layer mask, entered Selected Mask, and then hit the Refine Hair button for a super quick selection. But again, use whatever your preferred method is. We're going to add some fast backlit hair by duplicating the subject, bringing the duplicate below the original, and then enlarging and flipping that duplicate. Then we can create and clip a pastel pink uh, fill layer into the duplicated subject, masking out the rest of her body. And then finishing up the subject with some quick highlights and shadows using a mixture of soft light and overlay layers. With the subject done, we can finally add our crystal effect. If not already, make sure your subject is a smart object. We'll be adding a total of four filters and adjustments, all added as smart filters. Starting with Filter, Pixelate, Crystallize. You'll want to play with the cell size. I ended up liking a size of 106 or so. But keep in mind, you can always come back and change this later as all smart filters are adjustable. Second, let's do a Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen, setting it to a 500 amount and a 5.4 radius. You'll want to make it overly sharp. Uh, sharp enough so that the edges of the previous filter appears to be almost outlined. And then third, image adjustments, color balance set to negative 100, zero, and plus 100, uh, turning the crystal shapes blue. And finally, image adjustments brightness contrast set to a negative 20 brightness and 100 contrast. Now we can select the smart filters layer mask, hit control I to invert it, and then carve it back in some of the crystal shapes. I like to use a hard round brush as it's quicker, but the pen tool or the polygonal lasso tool will give you sharper edges, which is really what you want. This part can take a few minutes, so just focus on the shapes being created and take your time. Don't be impatient like I am. With your mask done, finish the crystals by adding in some highlights. Create a new layer set to overlay and clip it into the subject. Use the polygonal lasso tool or a hard round brush to paint harsh white highlights on the sides of some of the crystals. The sides that would be catching and reflecting a little light. We're going to then finish the crystals off by dragging and dropping another photo of a pastel sky onto the canvas, placing it over the subject's glasses as I did place some crystals there, and then setting it to screen. Add a layer mask to the sky image, fill it with black using good old control I, and then mask back in the sky onto the lenses to brighten them. Next up, let's add a bunch of smaller shards of crystals floating around our subject using just one blue crystal 3D asset. We're going to do this by choosing View 3D Render and then rotating and downloading the same crystal but at multiple different angles. Download them as a layered PSD so you can easily turn off the shadow layer. Try and do at least 5 different angles so you have a bit of variety, though the more the better. 
and with your crystals downloaded, scatter them around the canvas in different sizes surrounding the subject. Try to keep the flow of the image in mind, as well as facing the brighter surface of the crystal towards the light source, which is the subject in this case. Once you're happy with your crystals, you can always move them around or add more later. Uh, just group them all together, naming that group Crystal Shards. And you're probably going to want to go ahead and collapse the group, as you'll, you'll have a lot of layers here. And then we can go ahead and add some quick shine using both inner glow and an outer glow layer style. Next up, we're going to clip a brightness contrast adjustment layer into the crystal shards group, setting it to 99 brightness. We'll be finishing up the crystals by clipping both a lighten and screen layer into the shards group. And then using a large soft round brush set to a hot pink color and a low flow rate, let's paint in an iridescent glow onto the crystal shards. Creating soft blooms of pink inside of the crystals. We don't want them to be solid pink, only partially. The screen layer will brighten while the lighten layer will give you that inner glow effect. So now we can add some final glow by duplicating our pastel background group, bringing it above all current layers, deleting the current layer mask, and setting the group to lighten at a 60% opacity. And let's add a layer mask, inverting using Control i and then mask back in some pastel glow around the subject's hair and body, using a soft round brush set to a very low flow rate so we can build that glow up uh, slowly. Finally, create a curves layer and bring up the highlights. Double click the curves layer and adjust the blend if setting so that the layer only affects the highlights. These settings will change depending on the subject's skin tone and overall image brightness. Now we can enhance the highlights of the image by masking in areas with a soft round white brush. And to tie everything together, let's give one last wash of pastel blues to the whole image, starting with a color lookup layer set to horror blue, with a layer mode of color, and an opacity of 25%. Next, a selective color layer set to the following settings. You can go ahead and pause so you can grab all of these, as there are a lot. And finally, a Vibrance layer set to plus 57 Vibrance. And that's all there is to creating a crystal effect in Photoshop. But if that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent videos that Envato Tuts Plus has to offer. If you liked this video and would like to see more, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and tutorials. Happy designing. See you next time.